boys and girls. Hey! Well, welcome to Linked Up Kitchen. Yes, no, yes. it's not Cooper's Kitchen. This is, this is Linked, Linked Up's, Up's Kitchen. kitchen. Yes, 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 and we've created some great things here. And our handy dandy recipe book, we have had some wonderful steps. Week one, we had was what? We got to trust God. We have to trust God, we have to talk to God, we have to listen to God, and this week? It's all up to God. Four, step four. Step four. You have to leave the results to God. Leave it to God. Well, let's pray so we can get to find out what God's results are. Let's do it. For today. Mr. Dave, you want to pray? Yes, yes, okay. let's look up, let's look down. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. For your results, we leave the results up to you. We just do what we're supposed to do. We trust you. We talk to you. We listen to you. But we leave the results up to you. So we walk by faith, not by sight. We thank you for this day and the lesson today. In Jesus' name, all in agreement, say amen. Amen. We'll I, see you in just a I second. I almost went deep into that thing. I know. I but I had to pull back for the kiddo. The, the things were burning. <laughs> <laughs> to welcome you and everyone to Linked Up Kids where we're gonna have some fun. So grab your Bible, your parent or your friend, or even grab your next to kin. First time guests don't know what to do, but that's okay, cause we're here to celebrate you. So wave your hands, lift them up in the air, and everybody scream, oh yeah. Come on, let me hear you. Oh yeah, one more time say, oh yeah. 
first time guests see the info below, don't forget to leave your name and your info. As you see, I'm out of time, so let me get out this funky rhyme. All right, boys and girls. So today we are talking about listening to God. No, we're no, not. No, today we're talking, we're talking about, about leaving it up to, to God. God. And we have to leave things up to God. You know what? Cooper is going to talk about how he tried to take things into his own hands. Man, you know how Coop, he always trying to work right. with something, trying to make something happen. Making sandwiches that are not sandwiches, but he didn't listen. Yeah. And he tried his best to please Jada because he didn't want to disappoint her. Mm. When all he had to do was listen to God and leave the results up to God. But I think Coop learned his lesson and he got a little something extra for us today. He does. So, so listen maybe we up. should take it to him. Yeah, let's, let's take it to my man Coop. Take it away, buddy. Cooper, tell us about it. Hello there, little chicken nuggets, and welcome back to the last episode of Cooking with Cooper. Roll the intro. <laughs> welcome to Grill TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grill TV. Can you believe it? The last episode of Cooking with Cooper. I can't believe it. We've learned so much over the past few weeks. How not to make a cake, what a spatula is, and that bananas and ketchup do not belong together. Now, if you remember, the only reason we started this cooking show is because my best friend Jada asked me if I knew how to look. <laughs> And in reality, she was asking me if I knew how to cook. <laughs> so I told her, yeah, and now I have to cook for a big event that's happening tonight. And at first, I'll admit, I was a bit scared. I've never cooked before this month, like ever. I've never even baked a marshmallow, my dude, let alone caramelize some cane sugar on a creme brulee. <laughs> but look at us now, all because you chose to subscribe to my cooking channel. Now my life is like forever changed. <laughs> And I am personally so thankful for you, my dude. But if you could, let's keep this whole, like, not be able to cook thing between us, all right? <laughs> I mean, could you imagine Jada, my best friend, finding out that I had misled her for like four weeks, all because I didn't know how to cook? Oh, hi, Cooper. Oh, hi, Jada, how's it going? <laughs> We're just uh, talking with our friends, not about anything in particular at all. <laughs> just chilling. Oh, that's nice. Anything important I should know? Um, nope, not at all. <laughs> nope, nope, not at all. Definitely nothing you need to worry about. <laughs> okay, so how are you doing, Cooper? I'm fine, totally fine. Nothing to worry about at all. Never been better, in fact. <laughs> the best ever. All right, I'll take your word for it. So, are you excited for the big party tonight? Am I ever? I've been like cooking like all month. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean all my life <laughs> for an event like tonight. I, I can't wait. Awesome. Well, listen, Cooper, I actually have some bad news. Bad news? Oh no, did my goldfish run away? No, James Pond is okay. It's about the party tonight. Oh, really? What about it? Well, the menu for all the food, well, it's changed. Wait, what? Ch change? Ch change how? I, it can't change. I'm sorry, Cooper, but look at the bright side. You've been cooking all your life. It won't be hard for you to come up with some new fun dishes, right? Right, Cooper? I've been working on that menu all month. It's the, the things I've been learning how to cook. I've been focusing on them. Are you kidding me? How can the menu change? Cooper, are you okay? Um, yeah, oh, oh food. Uh, dishes. Cooper. Uh, yeah, recipes. Uh, I can try. Oh my goodness. Chayda, I don't know how to cook. Huh? I lied, okay? Well, I, I didn't really lie. I, I thought you asked me if I knew how to look. I didn't realize until way later that you said cook and not look. I just didn't mean to make you think I could cook, but I knew you were counting on me for the party. It was a mistake, and I, I didn't tell you, and I, and then it was too late, and I don't know. I'm, 
Sorry, Jada. I'm sorry, I ruined your party. Cooper. Yeah? I know. Huh? I know. I heard you talking about it earlier when you were talking to the kids. So let me get this straight. You lied to me about knowing how to cook so that you could save my party. Yeah, I'm terrible. I'm honestly super impressed with you. Impressed? Why? Well, I guess you could have just told me the truth right away and I would have asked someone else to help me, but you worked really hard to get to know how to cook better. You did a great job and it shows that you care about me. Wow, thanks, Cheda. I'm glad you know the truth now, because I'm not going to lie, I was kind of scared of how my cooking was going to turn out. <laughs> Even though I tried to do everything right, the results of my cooking could have been like really, really bad. <laughs> well, I would say you're wrong, but I remember that one cake you made. But I wouldn't beat yourself up too much. There's only one person who can truly make sure that everything turns out perfect. Iron Man? What? No, God. Oh, yeah. Duh. You see, there was a time in the Old Testament where God's people in Israel weren't really listening to God. Again? I know, I know. The people of Israel kept losing focus and this resulted in them being taken over by another nation. This nation controlled all the people and put every last one of them to work against their will. That's awful, but it makes sense, I guess, because I don't know about you guys, but I often find myself getting into trouble when I don't listen to what I'm supposed to be doing. You can say that again. Oh, okay. That's awful, but it makes sense, I guess, because- Cooper, that's just a saying. Oh, my bad, continue. Anyway, one day a prophet named Jeremiah shows up. Now, a prophet is someone who's like made out of cloth material and is like controlled with someone's hand, right? No, that's a puppet. I'm talking about a prophet. Someone who is picked by God and whose job is to share the message of God. Oh, that's a puppet. Okay, I got it. So Jeremiah is on the scene and he had warned God's people before about being disobedient, but they didn't listen. And now Jeremiah has been given another message from God. <laughs> I bet they're in trouble. Jeremiah spoke these words to the nation in Israel and Jeremiah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous savior. Wow, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend like I understood every word of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cooper, don't worry. I didn't get it either the first time I read it. But this message is an important one. Not only was it sent to Israel from God, but it was a promise. A promise? What did God promise them to get them out of being captives in a foreign land? Not in the way that you think. Huh? You see, this scripture was promising that the nation of Israel would be saved, that the person to save them would come from the family of King David, and this person was going to be known as the Lord our righteous savior. The Lord our righteous savior? Huh, why does that name sound familiar? I know I've heard it somewhere, maybe at bingo night? In third grade science class? Wait, Jeremiah isn't talking about Jesus, is he? He certainly was. Whoa. God knew that the people of Israel may be in trouble then, but the end result would be Jesus coming to earth to save not just them, but all of us from our bad choices. You see, no matter how bad things may get or how terrible they may seem, we can rest assured that God knows everything we're going through and is always there to help us. Wow, I guess I shouldn't worry about how my life will turn out or what I'm gonna eat tomorrow. I should just trust that God is in control and God will take care of us. Exactly, after we do everything we can do on our end, we have to leave the rest up to God. Wow, oh wow, what an incredible lesson to learn about how God is taking care of us. But I'm not sure if I know the big idea. Wait a minute, I know where it is. Hey Cooper. Huh? Can I have it please? Have what? Oh, you mean the super duper recipe book for all things good? Yeah, that's it. Alrighty, here you go. Ah yes, here it is. Okay, so so far we had step one, trust God. Step two, talk to God. Step three, listen to God. And aha, there it is. Today's big idea. 
Step four, leave the results to God. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Step four, leave the results to God. Great job, everybody. Well, kids, I can't thank you enough for watching Cooking with Cooper for the past few weeks. I think I'm gonna take a break from cooking for now and I'm gonna kind of transition into, wait a minute, <laughs> one sec. Cooper, how you doing? Oh, Carl, <laughs> pretty good, man. Listen, I need you to come back, okay? Cause things got real weird while you were gone. I burned a pancake and I ate ketchup and bananas and that is not okay, my dude. <laughs> All right, well, I'm on my way back. I got uh, kicked out of the resort because supposedly my feet were, uh, the smell was too uh, hazardous, whatever. Oh. All right, see you next week, kids. All righty, see you, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of This Leviticus numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Joel, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free, a gift for you. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free, a gift for you, for me. All right, boys and girls, this week we find our scripture or our memory verse, however you choose to say it, in Ephesians. We find it in Ephesians 2, 10. Everyone say that with me. Ephesians 2, 10. I will read it and then we will recite it together, okay? So let's listen up. Ephesians 2, 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's some good news. We are God's handiwork. Okay, now I want you to repeat after me, okay? Here we go. Ephesians 2, 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2, 10. One last time. 
for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2.10. Remember that memory verse, boys and girls. Say it in the morning. Say it in the evening. Say it until it penetrates your heart because we're supposed to hide God's word in our heart. Hey there, Linked Up Kids. Now is the most important time of the service. Now is the time where you can ask Jesus to come and live in your heart. If you haven't done it before, the steps are simple. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is a son of God, that he died on the cross, and that he rose again for your sins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray. And if you've never said this prayer before, then when we're done, Jesus is now living in your heart. So let's pray. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and you can repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for coming to live into my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you rose again, and you died for my sins. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you said that prayer for the very first time, you are now born again. Jesus is living in your heart. We are so excited and we want to hear about it. So why don't you ask your parent, go get your mom, go get your dad, go get your big sister, somebody who knows how to use an email and tell them to send an email because we want to know about the best decisions you've ever made in your life. Does anybody know what time it is? It's me. Offering time! I'm with the offering scripture. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Proverbs 11, verse 24. See you guys later. They call me Brillo. Is this thing on? Turn me up. Woo! It's offering time. All right, 
So Cooper told Jada he was a great cook and yeah. he could do all of this stuff when he really didn't know how to cook. Well, you know, he just, sometimes you hit it on the mark and sometimes fall a little short. But his heart was good. He You're didn't right want to. He didn't want to disappoint Jada. And a lot of times, that's the way we are with God. We don't want to disappoint Him, so we try to handle it our way instead of leaving the results to up to God. To God. You know, the young people say that's being extra. Being extra. Being You're right. extra. No, don't be extra. Just leave the results up to God. You're right. But boys and girls. One scripture that stuck in my mind, Talk to me. hearing God's word was found in Luke. Luke 21, and it was 29 through 33. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus told them a story to explain this future time. Mm -hmm. He said, think about a fig tree mm -hmm. and other trees as well. When you see the leaves on the tree, you know it's fall that time. summer will come soon. It's coming. Nobody needs to tell you that. In the same way, you will see these strange things happening. Mm. Then you will know that God will soon begin to rule his kingdom. God knows the results. He has it already planned. He said, for I know the plans I have for you. Yeah. So we have to leave it up to God but how do we do that? We have to be in his word. We have to be in his word and constantly follow the steps that we learn. That's it. And step one, talk to God. Trust God. Trust God. Thank you. I always get those commitments. Number two. Talk to God. Number three. And number three. Is listen. Listen. And number four, leave the results to God. Boys and girls, if you do that, you can be nothing but successful in everything you do. I've had so much fun in this kitchen. Right. I really hate to leave it. You always cooking up something good. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I want the kids to digest all of God's word. Man, that's one. Every bit of it. Well, boys and girls, we've got to go. We've enjoyed you. We look forward to seeing you in December. Yeah. But before we go, let's pray. Dave, you want to pray for us again? Absolutely. All right. Let's look up. Let's look down. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful month where you, you encouraged us to trust you, to talk to you, to listen to you, and to walk with you and just trust that you will give your result. So we thank you for your result. Your result is better and bigger than any result that we could ever try to accomplish, Lord God. So we just do what we're supposed to do so that we can reap your harvest, Lord God. We give you glory, honor, and praise for the message this month. And, and, and we walk in enlightenment and fruit from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See Boys you next and girls, week. we'll see you all next week. Hey, I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. And did you enjoy yours? I sure did. But you know what I'm so excited about? What? Christmas is around, around the corner. Bye-bye.